it's like you know those ice creams when you're a kid where like you're eating the ice cream and at the end you get the bubble gum yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, yes. like the i they're both good like the ice cream and the bubble gum is good so the buskin is the ice cream which i have more of and then the shows with the bubble gum at the end so they're both good but i think at the moment the bubble gum because i don't get the bubble gum as much as the ice cream i think actually the first thing to kind of touch on is the people know you as being kind of the social media star and obviously everything that you've built up on tiktok with your busking is incredible but what's been nice to see this year is you seem to well, I say this year we're into a new year last year oh, yeah that's, yeah that's a couple of days ago that. Yeah. Yeah. Three for you seemed to be a year where you kind of transitioned from being Jason Allen from TikTok to being Jason Allen releasing just amazing music and and having huge gigs with massive crowds of people coming to see you as Jason Allen, the artist, not just Jason Allen, Mm. the TikTok busker. So what was last like last year like for you? That had a really good ring to it, what you just said. <laughs> Massive crowds. I was like, <laughs> yeah, you're bigging me up. <laughs> <laughs> but they um, were, though. You did ama- just incredible stuff last year. Yeah. Yeah, that Shrewsbury show especially was, like, a really defining moment where it's like, oh, this is actually this is actually doing something. This is really going somewhere now. Um, yeah, completely right. Um, I've, I've always been a busker, and I feel like I always will be a busker at my heart. But I feel 2023 was the year where I was like, I'm really going to put my foot down here and show who I am as an artist, as, as well as, you know, as well as a busker. And I think that very first moment where I sent you birds and the bees, and then I got that message from you being like, where have you been all my life? I was like, I've, I've been out there. It's just, no one's really, no one's really taking that chance. And no one's really, um, I don't know, given me that platform. And you were the first to really do that. And I think it, it, every so many things just kind of lined up like the music started to really mean something to me and it was getting some recognition and at the same time I was really starting to transition from singing to people on the streets to singing to people on the stage so yeah I feel this year was was something where so many things really aligned and you were a huge part of that so thank you well, we'll only take a minimal amount of credit for it because you're the person who's doing all the hard work here. You're the one who's creating <laughs> all the music and going out there and performing everywhere, uh, both on <laughs> and on the streets. Do you have a particular and... preference? Now, having done both properly, um, mm. do you prefer busking or do you prefer being on stage? It's got to be the stage now, you know. Really? It's got to be the stage. But then again, because I, I get to do the stage... Like if, if if all goes well, I get to do the stage once every two three months, you know. So maybe it was if it was the other way around, like I'm I'm on the stage like four four days a week, and then I get to bus once every two three months. I'd be like, ah, oh, I love a good bus, me, you know. <laughs> so I think I think it's like slightly skewed, but I I absolutely adore both. But I think it's just that journey of like that that mission of the shows in three months time or in two months' time, or one month's time, whatever, we've got this amount of time to try and get out onto the streets, tell people about the show, and then it's like, you know those ice creams when you're a kid, where like you're eating the ice cream, and at the end you get the bubble gum? Yeah. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Like the, I, they're both good. Like the ice cream and the bubble gum is good. So the buskin is the ice cream, which I have more of, and then the shows with the bubble gum at the end. So they're both good. But I think at the moment, the bubble gum, because I don't get the bubble gum as much as the ice cream. <laughs> That's a good point. Uh, but I, I never really... I, I found it incredibly difficult to get the bubble gum out of the bottom. I remember having to... Mm, I know. Um, so yeah, like yeah. That, like How that. hard has it been to get gigs, like yes. performances? Yeah, like the ice cream, it takes years. And, uh, you know, you're going to end up uh, with some battle battle scars, especially if you're going to try and get a quick access to it. You know, you're going to get plastic all in your teeth and it's you're better off taking the long, <laughs> long route. Eat your ice cream. It's going to be cold, you know, out there. <laughs> this analogy is working so well. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's working. But eventually, it's working. Um, eventually, um you will get to that bubble gum and um, it's all the sweeter. I have said before when we've spoken that you are, <laughs> it was beautiful, well done, that you are probably one of the hardest working musicians that I've kind of ever come across in the fact that you are rain or shine, you are out there promoting what you do and getting you and your music out there. And what's been 
really cool to see you kind of you, you did a gig last year where you were like well I don't know if we've got any fans in this area so I'm gonna book a gig and see if I can fill a room full of people those moments for you when you first kind of book the date and book the venue and then go okay now I need to get everybody in there do, <laughs> do you have the fear when you first book things day after I booked the Kidderminster show I went what have I done <laughs> I genuinely was like I literally did this thing where I was like, I could have just not said it. Like, I think it was, I I did the post saying, Kidderminster show, let's try and sell it out. Boom. And then you get like the post, the post uh, announce uh, clarity, as I call it. Um, The day after, and I was like, I could have just, I could have just not done that. Um, But I was all in then. So, you know, and it actually, it actually went off. We got like 250 people there. So, um, it's just proof that you know if, once things are scary probably that's when you should keep going how much more measured <laughs> panic are you going to have in the future with um what have you got in terms of gigs coming up oh it's just sheer non-stop panic uh to be quite honest yeah all the way through i, I just think I've, I've been planning much much panic for the start of the year and the middle and the end so it's it's all the way through and completely measured as well so i i just love a good challenge i think like starting off as a busker i'm just used to just being in tough conditions where i have to work hard to get even the slightest of results um and i think that's where i get the most out of myself i need to just go fully in for something so there's going to be much more hard panic inducing challenges with hopefully a nice bubble gum at the end throughout the year and many years to come <laughs>